Hello and welcome to episode 20 of the PVM Hub. If you're unfamiliar with the series, these are a collection of beginner-friendly revolution guides geared towards teaching the very basics of RuneScape 3 PVM. These guides are by no means optimal, but simply a good starting off point for anyone trying to get better at RuneScape 3 bossing. Today, we'll be looking at the Shadow Colossus themselves, Raksha. Raksha is a high-level boss and will require some new things of you that we haven't covered yet in this series. He makes up with this for some great unique drops, the biggest being the Greater Ricochet and Greater Chain Ability Codexes, followed then by the Divert Ability Codex and the Shadow Spike, which upgrades each of the Tier 80 boots that he also drops. As always, these guides are broken up into a few different sections, those being the recommendations and requirements, setting up your revolution bar, the important facts and mechanics of the fight, and then a full fight breakdown. In terms of requirements, Raksha takes very little. They require access to Anachronia, which can be done by any level of account, and a small mini quest just outside of his lair, located on the southeastern coast of Anachronia. In terms of recommendations, however, I'm going to be asking quite a lot for this, unfortunately. We'll start off by recommending range for this specific method. If you feel comfortable with your DPS, any style is viable right now, so go with what you're best at. I'm going to recommend a minimum of 90 base combat stats right now though, and being able to get 92 prayer for soul split or even 95 for stat boost and curses will be incredibly helpful. We'll also need some levels in attack for this method, 82 in fact, to be able to wield the Lania K's spear, which we will also be using for one of the mechanics. For Herblore, overloads are pretty much a must here, so a minimum of 92 with boosts is fair. You could do this with a Grand Ranging Potion off the Grand Exchange, but I think that's pushing it. For summoning, the ideal would be 96 for a Ripper Demon, otherwise just bring your best Beast of Burden or a Nihil for more accuracy. And lastly, this whole setup from scratch is going to cost you right around 45 mil in total as of recording, so preferably you have at least that much. Speaking of setup, here's what we're going to be using. Feel free to upgrade anything from this list if you have the ability to. Right now, Serenic is super cheap, so that's what we'll be using for our helm, chest, and legs. We'll wear Royal Dehyde Van Braces, an Amulet of Glory, an Asylum Surgeon's Ring, and an Ava's Accumulator. Our pocket slot is going to be a Scripture of Joss. It's about 12 mil just by itself, so if you can't afford that, our next best bet is an Illuminated Godbook. We'll be using the Royal Crossbow here with Ruby Becriminal Bolts E, and our most important piece of armor is the Laceration Boots with the ability Bladed Dive unlocked. If you don't have Bladed Dive unlocked yet and you don't want to get it, I can't really suggest this method. You could try to substitute in Chinchampas, but the result will be much less consistent and I can't recommend it. In our inventory, we're going to have the Lania Kea's Spear, our Overload, a few Restores, a few Ceridom and Brew Flasks, the Enhanced Excalibur is also very helpful if you have it, and a power burst of vitality. The rest of our inventory is full of green blubber jellyfish and one to two rock tails as panic food. I also have vulnerability bombs. They are expensive but will make this fight much smoother and there are clear places to use them so you don't need to be watching the debuff bar or timing it out. In terms of aura, if you're using a royal crossbow like me, accuracy is going to be your biggest issue so using reckless is best followed by your highest tier sharpshooter aura if you have it. If accuracy isn't going to be a problem for you, Reckless is still amazing for the DPS increase, but you could use something like Penance or Vampirism to try and make the kill a little easier on your supplies. Let's take a look at our Revolution Bar. On screen is the range bar I will be using for this guide. If you plan on using a different combat style, swing by in the Discord and we can give you some suggestions with your given gear, and you can find a link for that in the description. You'll notice we have the Death Swiftness ability on the bar. If you don't have it, this will be very difficult so I suggest running through the world's weight quest and getting that unlocked. I promise that you will not regret it. Now I think that we've got that all covered, let's take a look at mechanics. First off, Raksha is going to require something new from us, that being prayer flicks and or soul split flicking. This is going to be very intimidating for some of you, but let me suggest a way that we can do it easily before you click away. Since we will be completely hands off with our revolution setup, we can focus entirely on prayer flicking correctly and handling mechanics. You can keybind your prayers to an action bar and react with one keystroke. For example, my prayers are on Z, X, and C, while Soul Split is on V. These are all very close together and very close to the resting point of my left hand, so it's easy to react quickly and swap between them. After every prayer switch, I will press V to swap back to Soul Split. This serves two functions. One is that it will allow us to heal off of our DPS, which saves us on supply costs and makes the kill feel smoother. The second purpose is that it allows us to never accidentally double-click our prayers and allows our muscle memory to see one thing and do one thing, 
instead of having to check which prayer is up currently. Raksha can attack with all three attack styles. Mage will be a large purple ball that he spits at you, Range will be a group of spikes shot from his tail, and Melee will be a chomp down with his mouth and both arms. Both Range and Mage are slower and will give you more time to react, but Melee comes out surprisingly quickly and can definitely catch you off guard. Get used to seeing these animations so that your brain can react as quick as possible to get your prayer correct. Rockstar will throw in his other mechanics every four auto attacks on a set schedule. I'm just going to talk about what they are here first and how to handle them, and then we'll go over the order of mechanics and when to expect them. First off is the Tail Swipe or Charge. If you're in melee distance, you will do a large AoE Tail Swipe all around him, dealing typeless damage, stunning, and turning off your protection prayers. If you're outside of melee distance, he will charge in a straight line towards you, doing the same thing if you're hit. We will want to bait the tail swipe every time by standing in melee distance. This attack is easier to dodge and gives us a better chance to DPS. You can handle it fairly easily in two different ways. The first is to use the escape ability. This will immediately put you out of danger and allow you to run back in and DPS rather quickly. This is my preferred method as it's extremely easy to execute and very consistent. The second is to walk back out of range, typically two squares if you're using range or mage. This allows for better DPS but can be less consistent depending on positioning and timing. Secondly is the bomb mechanic. Here he will try and stun you and then drop a purple bomb on your head which will leave a 3x3 area of residual smoke that will damage you when you walk in it. For this ability we will either have wanted to have anticipate up before it hits or use freedom after he stuns us. Then we will wait for just a moment before moving out of the way to safety. In phases 2 and 3, he will drop 3 bombs on you in a row. You'll handle this the exact same way, except you'll just continue moving away in a straight line to bait all of the bombs before returning back to DPS. This mechanic is really simple to handle, but can take a bit of time to understand how to drop the bombs where you want them, and being able to see what auto attacks he's stunning at you while trying to run away from the bombs. The third is the Shadow Siphon. Raksha will stop attacking you, hunch down, and two small balls of shadow energy will appear somewhere around you. You will take constant typeless damage as long as the ball stays up, and if they remain after the full duration of the channel, you will be hit a large typeless hit. This is our chance to get in big DPS and soul split heals if you can. If you clear the balls quickly, you will be taking zero damage while being allowed free range to hit Raksha. This is a great spot to use Death Swiftness or Sunshine if you have it, and to camp soul split for a while as Raksha won't be attacking you. Occasionally on phase 3, Raksha will spawn additional dinosaurs to come attack you. They have low health and defense, but deal quite a bit of melee damage. If you have strong DPS, I'd suggest ignoring these guys, as the phase won't last long enough for them to matter, and they won't follow you to phase 4. However, if you're taking it a bit slower, there's no harm in getting rid of them first, before returning your attention back to Raksha. They deal a deceptive amount of melee damage, so if you ever wonder where all your health went, these guys can be a big culprit. Lastly, there will be a rockfall every time we reach an HP threshold to move to the next phase. The second of which we will need to clear all of the shadow animal pools which have accumulated over the course of the kill. There will be two of these throughout the kill, and the second one in particular is where most people struggle with Raksha. For the first rockfall, I'd suggest using Debilitate and drinking a dose of Power Burst of Vitality, while ignoring the rocks and continuing to DPS. This will make the damage you take pretty negligible, and will allow for you to get a head start on damaging Raksha in the next phase. For the second one, however, we're going to have to break that down a little bit more. The second rockfall is where we have to clear the pools of Shadow Anima. We're going to do this by using Bladed Dive manually four different times. Once we phase Raksha, we're going to wait for just a moment, and then equip our spear. This is crucial as not all the pools spawn in right away, and if you go too fast, you'll risk not clearing all of the pools and allowing Raksha a source of bonus damage and healing. After that moment passes, we're going to use the Bladed Dive ability and target to the center of the cluster, making sure to target a specific pool. If the ability isn't targeted, it won't do any damage and will be left on full cooldown. If Bladed Dive kills a target, the ability is refunded so we can use it again. We will wait for the rest of our abilities to come off the cooldown as well, and then we will cast it on the second group of pools, then the third, and then the fourth. You can check your minimap after the fourth to see if any yellow dots remain after your full clear. If they do, just head back over and give them a quick whack. This is by far the most difficult mechanic to get down right away, so don't beat yourself up if it takes you a few tries to understand it. If you don't get all the pools or if you don't go fast enough, Raksha will start to build in rage and will heal from every living pool, every mechanic. It is possible to get a kill still at this point, but it will get much harder the longer it drags on. 
Use your best judgment, but 40% in rage is normally too much to continue on effectively. And if everything goes poorly, there is one last final mechanic, where Rakshaw will go to the middle of the arena and do a burst of magic 5 times. If we see this attack coming at any point, we just teleport out. This will only happen when we are short on DPS at any point, and will make the remainder of the kill much more difficult to the point where it's just worth resetting. Now, let's take a look at what we learned and try and understand the flow of the fight. These mechanics will always happen in the same order every kill, so you can know and prepare for what's coming next every time. In phase 1, the rotation will go 4 autos, tail swipe, 4 autos, bomb, 4 autos, tail swipe, 4 autos, bomb, 4 autos, and then Rakshu will head to the center. We have that much time to deal 200,000 damage, which if you're using the same weapon as me or better, should be very doable. After phasing, Raksha will immediately go into a rockfall and then into phase 2, which will look like this. 4 autos, shadow siphon, 4 autos, tail swipe, 4 autos, bomb, 4 autos, tail swipe, 4 autos, and then to the center. Once again, after dealing another 200,000 HP, we will get to the second rockfall where you will have to clear all the pools of shadow anima. When you can successfully get that down, phase 3 will look like this. 4 autos, shadow siphon, 4 autos, bomb, 4 autos, tail swipe, and then we'll repeat until you reach 200,000 HP on Raksha. Notice that we haven't talked about the final phase yet, phase 4. That's because while it is different, it's just a small change in the rules rather than in the mechanics. In phase 4, you'll head to a new arena and Raksha will be stationary in the middle. Now, instead of a mechanic every 4 auto attacks, he will do one every 2, except there's a twist. It will only ever be tail swipe if you're in melee, or bomb if you're not. We're going to want to be right here on the second step so we can bait the tail swipe every time and step back two squares to dodge it cleanly. After a certain amount of mechanics, Raksha will instead charge a shield around himself. As you chip it away, you will see small purple dots of anima scatter across the room until it finally breaks. If you don't break it in time, it will insta-kill you if you're not behind a pillar, but that should never be an issue on this revolution bar. After the shield breaks, you're going to want to run a full circle around and gather a decent amount of these shards. They will give you an extra action button which will supercharge you for 30 seconds and allow you to deal massive DPS. The hard part here is that while you're collecting anima, Raksha will continue attacking. After two attacks, he will stun you and try to bomb you. Use Anticipate early or Freedom if you're stunned to break out and keep running around. Try to make it back to your second step before the next mechanic, but if you can't, it's not a huge problem. Once you feel comfortable, activate your extra action button and enjoy your massive DPS. This will simply just repeat until either you or the boss reaches 0 HP. This phase can be nerve wracking for sure. I've dropped plenty of kills just by minor mistakes here, but once you get the rhythm down, it's something that will feel very natural. But that's it. That's everything it should take to get a consistent Raksha kill. Let's watch a full kill with commentary so you can get a feel for the flow and pacing. Now, starting from Wars of Treats, there are a few different ways to get to Raksha for your first KC before you unlock the portal here. The quickest and easiest in my opinion is the grouping system. Make a group by yourself, set it to Raksha and ready up. This will teleport you right in front of the door and you'll be on your way. Otherwise the next best option is to use the Slayer Cape teleport to Laniakea and then run a little bit west towards the entrance of the dungeon. The vanilla way, on the other hand, is to make your way through the jungles of Anachronia, taking the agility shortcuts until you get to the Malia tops, and then running east through the swampy area. This whole trek took me roughly four and a half minutes, and I do not recommend it. Anyways, once we get in and start our instance, we'll walk up to him to start the kill. I suggest having Souls put up first. As he becomes targetable, we throw our first vulnerability bomb. For future reference, I'll be throwing one of these right after every rockfall, and then the phase transition to phase 4. I'll make sure to point it out, but I just figured I would mention it early. The first mechanic we're watching for is the tail swipe. So we count to 4 autos, and then get ready to use escape. We successfully dodge the tail swipe, and then run back into our death swiftness for a little bit more damage. We continue prayer flicking and soul split flicking while we count to 4 again, and then get ready for the shadow bomb. 
Around his third or fourth auto attack is when I use Anticipate or Freedom, and then I wait until I see the green target under my feet before moving a few steps out of the way. Once again, we count to four and prep for the second tail swipe, dodging it easily with escape. We phase Raksha before the next bomb mechanic, so I used Debilitate here, a little early admittedly, and I would use a Power Burst had I remembered to bring it. After the Rockfall, we get ready for the Shadow Siphon, and if you have the Adrenaline, think about using Death Swiftness here, as you will have plenty of time to DPS. Also, don't forget to throw another Vulnerability Bomb here, as it will help you with roughly 10% damage. Count to 4 and get your prayer switches right, and then react with escape when you see the tail swipe animation coming through. Remember that in this phase, there will be 3 shadow bombs instead of 1, so we will run in a straight line away from Raksha to drop them nicely out of our way. Our DPS phase is much better due to Death Swiftness and the Shadow Siphon, so we phase right here out of the bomb. This is where we have to get rid of all of the Shadow Pools. We equip our Lania K's Spear and get ready to Bladed Dive after just a moment. I make sure all of my abilities are off of Global Cooldown, and I use Bladed Dive on the middle of the left group of pools first. I wait once again for the Global Cooldown, and then I use it on the remaining pools as well. My tell for when I'm good to blade a dive to the next group is watching the damage pop up on all the pools. If you'd prefer, you can skip power bursting on the first rockfall and use it here instead if you're struggling to stay alive. I re-equip my crossbow and get back to business. Here, Raksha has spawned an additional dinosaur, so I focus that first to reduce the DPS I'd be taking. It only takes a few abilities and he goes down. I refocus to Raksha for the Shadow Siphon, and don't forget to throw another Vulnerability Bomb right here as well. After the Siphon is going to be bombs on this phase, so get ready for your straight line movement to the side. The last mechanic we'll see here on this phase is the tail swipe, so prep for that after 4 autos. Once again, another dinosaur spawns, and we focus it down. Then, Raksha will head into the Shadow Siphon once again. You can see a few pools have respawned, and he gains a bit of health and 7% in range. This is no issue, and we'll just DPS him down to the phase point. Heading into phase 4, make sure you throw another vulnerability bomb and head to the second step. This phase moves a lot faster, so be prepared mentally. After two auto attacks will be a tail swipe. Dodge it by walking backwards and then quickly getting back into position. You'll definitely start to get a feel for this as you do it more and will become pretty much second nature. After his second tail swipe, he will do two more autos before summoning that shield around him. DPS it down fully before starting to rotate around. You don't need to collect all of the anima, just however much is easy. As I run around, I get stunned in the back, so I use freedom and continue my loop. 
You can see here I wasn't fast enough, so I used Anticipate, dropped the bomb out of my way, and then rotated one more section around before activating my buff and getting back to DPS. There is no added scaling on this phase, so he will never get any more difficult than he is right now. Take your time with this phase and use defensives if you need to. Resonance is great to get some HP back, and Devotion is great for giving you some breathing room. You'll notice for me, I kinda scuffed this whole phase, as I nearly got myself smited multiple times, and overall just had really bad execution. Despite all of this, I still managed to get the kill, meaning you should have no problem at all. The shield mechanic will repeat as many times as it takes, just continue doing what you did the first time. Gather anima, rotate around, and avoid the bombs as best you can. One small tip about the buff that you get. It will more than likely push your damage over the damage cap, so it's useful to use abilities that hit often, but not hard. Unfortunately, bleeds aren't buffed by it either. So for range, things like Rapid Fire or Snapshot tend to be the best. The Scripture of Joss is also really great for this too, because if it activates while you're buffed, you will get a massive proc out of it. If you rewind back to the start of this kill and watch my first rotation, I believe the Joss book activates and hits a 21k, so a pretty fun buff out there. Anyways, I really hope that you found this helpful. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you like more than one of my videos, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Zingy out.